Finally, this is the last video of lecture 2. So in this video, we are going to discuss another important application in politics, which is called simple games. So let's think about this situation, the year hunting game. We have three players. N has a bow, and Bob has a red arrow, and Carl has a blue arrow. In order to hunt a deer, it requires one bow and at least one arrow. The color doesn't matter. So the question is how they ought to split the joint surface, and which point is fair in this triangle. So if n takes all the surplus, then this point is corresponding to that allocation. And if they split equally, then this point represents that allocation. Think about another situation, three-party voting game. So we have three parties, and they are going to dividing a dollar. So one big party has two votes, and each other two small parties has only one vote. By majority rule, it requires at least three votes to pass a certain division. So the question is how they ought to split the budget. Or we may be interested in what would be their bargaining power. So each point in this triangle, efficient and uh, individual rational area, each point represents certain bargaining power. So this point means player one has all the bargaining power. And this point means player two has all the bargaining power and so on. So this situation can be described as a simple game. A simple game has two components. One is, uh, again, N set of players, and W, this uh, board W, is the set of all winning coalitions. Any winning coalition can win the whole power or the unit value 1. Otherwise, they, get, they generate nothing. So it's very simple. Is a special class of coalition gain, but the value of each coalition is just either one winning coalition or zero losing coalition. There are some assumptions. Um, winning coalitions are monotone. If uh, S is uh, winning coalition, then any superset should also be a winning coalition. And of course, the grand coalition should be a winning coalition. And if a coalition wins the game, then the other players cannot win. There's only one crown. In fact, the two games, the hunting game and the three-party voting game, those are essentially the same, except the name of the players. So we have three players and the winning coalition is A, B, A, C, or Grand Coalition. Or in this situation, 1, 2, 1, 3, or the Grand Coalition is a winning coalition. So in this simple game, we are interested in their relative power. Among many, two power indexes are widely accepted. The first one is the Sharply Shubik Power Index. That is a special case of sharply value. It's actually the same. The way of computation is the same, but it's much easier because uh, the value of correlation is just either one or zero. So if you can make a non-winning correlation win, then you can claim the marginal contribution, which is one. And there is another widely used power index is the bonds of power index is much easier than sharply value, sharply should be power index in computation. So it counts swing voters. So after swing voter, 
if you can make a winning coalition rules, then you are a swing voter. So you can count it. So I'm going to explain those two important power indexes with the example. So the definition is exactly the same to the Sharpley value, but uh, I will explain with this example. So we have six possible sequence as we did in the previous uh, uh, lecture. So we consider six possible order, one, two, three, one, three, two, and so on. And player one cannot be a winning player, winning coalition, so zero. But by adding two, coalition one, two is going to be a winning coalition. So player two claim the marginal contribution, which is one. And here, one, three, two, three can claim the contribution. So similarly, you can check who can make a non-winning coalition to win. And this gives us the Sharpley Big Power Index. The first player receives two thought, and the other two players get one and six. And what's the Banzhoff Index? So two compute Banzhoff Index list all the winning coalitions first. So in here we have three winning coalitions, one, two, one, three, and one, two, three. And then find swing water in each winning coalition. So for this winning coalition, if one drops this coalition, then two cannot be a winning coalition. So one is a swing water. Similarly, in this coalition, if two drops, then player one cannot be a winning coalition. So two is a swing voter as well. So in this coalition, both player one and two are swing voter. Exactly the same way in the, in the coalition of one three, both player are swing voter. But in this grand coalition, if we, drop player 2, still 1, 3 is going to be a winning coalition. So player 2 is not a swing voter in this coalition. Similarly, in this coalition, if we drop player 3, then still player 1, 2 is going to be a winning coalition. So 3 is not a swing voter. However, if we drop player 1, player 2, and player 3 cannot be a winning coalition. So in here, player 1 is a swing voter. So we check all the swing voters in each coalition and count the numbers of each player of being played as a swing voter. So we have five cases. Among the five cases, player one plays as a swing button three times, and the other players just played the swing button once. Right? So the first player power is three fifths, and the other two players power is one fifth. So we can compare the Sharpley Civic Power Index and the Banzhoff Power Index here. They are somewhere here. So this is a quiz. You can find a Nash solution in this simple game. So you can consider this simple game as a coalition game. And then you can find the core and uh, choose the most egalitarian point in the core. So this is another interesting application about the natural gas import in EU. So you know the so the Western countries import their natural gas from Russia. But there are mainly two routes to import the natural gas from Russia. So one is through Belarus and the other one is through Ukraine. So we can 
consider this as a simple game. So you can make a link from EU and Russia, then the coalition is going to be a winning coalition. So we have uh, three winning coalition. One is uh, one four. So Russia, Ukraine, and EU. So they are connected from this line. And another one is 134. So they can also connect it from Russia through the Belarus and the EU. Of course, the Grand Coalition is a winning coalition. So it's routine to find uh, a Sharpish Big Power Index, but you can enumerate all the possible sequences. We have 24 sequences, and you can check which player makes a non-winning coalition to win. And you can just count all the possibilities, all the cases. And bonds of value is much easier to count. So please uh, do it by yourself. So this quiz is about weighted voting. And it's a little bit old example, but it's very famous in the political science. And this as well. And this is another uh, quiz. You can find the power index in Westminster in 2017. So at the time, Conservative Party hold 317 seats and Labour Party holds 262 and so on. For such a large number, of course, you can code programming by yourself, but there are lots of uh, um, power index calculator you can use. So this one is a yeah, particular website you can use the calculator. So using this, so you can find the sharp ratio with power index and bonds of index under majority rule. There are many interesting applications in politics. So for instance, you can find how bargaining power or power index has been changed or will be changed. And you can also consider what's the impact of Brexit to the European Union power distribution and how additional exit affect the European Union's power distribution and so on. And this uh, double majority system and the uh, NIS and the response system is a little bit uh, advanced topic in politics, but uh, if you are interested, you can study those uh, applications. And another application is in corporate governance. So for instance, uh, in 2019, Korea Airline chairman died, but after that, the share in Korea Airline rose as much as 8%. So why this happened? So one can analyze this based on the power index after losing this uh, key players and the other players are going to fight each other to form a winning coalition. So they wanted to attract um, other share very aggressively. So here is uh, a summary of a coalition games. And coalition game is represented by a characteristic function and each coalition generates certain amount of surplus, V of S. And core requires efficiency and uh, coalition rationality. It's a good property, but sometimes it's too large and sometimes it's empty. So that's the problem. So we want to pick one of the allocation in the core. So one good way is uh, using the coalition dash bargain solution. It picks the most egalitarian allocation in the core. And another good solution is uh, using the Shapley value. 
the Sharpe value computes the average of marginal contributions. So Sharpe value exists no matter whether core is empty or not. And also the correlation games are applied to cost allocation problems and the political situations.